Good evening, or good afternoon, or whatever time it is in the world today. I'm Ronaldo McKenzie, and welcome to another episode of the Neoliberal Round podcast. This is in video and audio, and it is a summary of the class that we had on Friday, February 3rd at the Jamaica Theological Seminary via Zoom recording. It's a course that I teach at the Jamaica Theological Seminary called Caribbean Thought. This is week four, and this is the, as usual, I summarize the lecture. I present a full, the, the lecture is for three or three and a half hours, but then I present a summary, summarizing the main arguments of the lecture and adding one or two commentaries are very important. So the question is, what is Caribbean thought? And who determines this? Again, what is Caribbean thought? And who determines this? Now, the class on Friday started with a brain teaser and an, an activity. And the first question I asked was, I currently reside in the U.S. as a naturalized U.S. citizen from Jamaica. Would I be considered a first generation American. Many, similar, many students got that wrong, but of course I would not be considered a first generation American. I would be the original. My children would be considered first generation. The second question was where most of the discussion lay, um, where we took up, took up much, much of the time on Friday. And it was powerful because the students were fully engaged in the discussion. I asked them to come up with one or two sentences that define or defines Jamaica in relation to Caribbean. And of course, quite, they were quite engaged. Now, the learning objective for the class was one, for them to critically formulate and present a concept of the Caribbean in relation to its position in history, which has given rise to its present reality. The second learning objective to begin for them to begin to trace Caribbean thinking through its process of coming to be, moving beyond independence and the tensions between competing political thought in Jamaica. And we're here talking about capitalism, socialism. And thirdly, for the students to begin to develop a critical and academic frame within which, a critical and an academic frame within which to provide commentary and contributions on current issues of society, on society and identifying media that facilitate these expressions. Now, this lecture aims to facilitate an interdisciplinary approach to the understanding of Jamaica in relation to the Caribbean. One where the internal and personal interacts with the external. Like Keith and Keith referencing this book, they argue that Jamaica has suffered under colonialism. Yet, they contended for a picture of Jamaica that was independent of its socio-economic position and experience. Maybe as a way to forget the reality of its vulnerabilities so as to boost or boast about something else that gives pride and joy. Indeed, although at first the students struggle to come up with an original concept, with an original concept of Caribbean for themselves, they still sourced and provided a definition that gave them great pride about Jamaica, its size, its influence and popularity as a leading island in terms of its worldwide appeal and fame from Bob Marley, Merlin Otty, Usain Bolt, and Jerk Chicken. Nevertheless, the consensus was that Jamaica is still a society that, that's divided along class lines. This was important as one student out that his movement from one class to the next, and by class, social class to the next, and from the rural to the urban, has adjusted his experience and his idea about it, which changed his pers perspectives. This supports what Norman Gervin had written in his Reinterpretation of the Caribbean, book called Reinterpretation of the Caribbean in the Caribbean Reader, indicating, indicating that to define Caribbean is a matter of context and perspective. However, the Caribbean reader again differs 
begin to get begin their first name in the Caribbean, in Grenada. In 1983, when Maurice Bishop and his People's Revolutionary Army met their demands, this was juxtaposed with the invasion or penetration of the U.S. by their Navy SEALs, who provided the support that sought the local conflicts among them, that provided the support that sought the local conflicts among the peoples that crushed the nationalist and democratic socialist intentions of the nationalists. Now, Keith and Keith and Dale Johnson, Dale Johnson wrote this book, um, or contributed to this book, Dependence and Under and, and on the Development, Latin America's Political Economy, and Keith and Keith reference in this book, The Social Origins of the Democratic of Social of Democratic Socialism in Jamaica. And of course, Keith and Keith is most recent book, Social Inequality, Economic Decline and Plutocracy, an American Crisis by Bill L. Johnson. And I reference this book in my new book, Neoliberal Globalization Reconsidered, where he defines the dominant class. And I lift up that same definition when we're talking about the ruling or the dominant class. Okay. But Keith and Keith and Dale Johnson, all scholars of the post-colonial milieu, write in their projects how the U.S. penetrated the Caribbean, how the U.S. wrote um, write in their projects how the U.S. penetrated the Caribbean through through their various machineries, through their various machineries, CIA, the U.S. Navy SEALs, so on and so forth, so as to promote U.S. style ideologies. This was not free of local assistance, the penetration from without was not free of local assistants who were, and these these local assistants, these, these groups, they were opportunists, we call them, hoping to cash in as elites or representatives, house slaves in the local. Like Europe's strategy of trickery, making the same deals with all the African tribes, which created further chaos in Africa, which led to its plunder and dom domination, the penetration by supporting a few created a local hog of war. That was evident between the Manly and Siaka governments of the 1980s in Jamaica, which defined Jamaica. Nevertheless, the students agreed at the end, at the end that Jamaica has been given tremendous opportunities and investments, but has squandered it through nepotism, connectionism, and corruption. The students alluded to their own experiences, associations, studies showing Jamaica's corruption index. The NIA, the National Integrity Agency, and Dr. Trevor Monroe. And there is a, a film that the students will get a chance to watch in week, week six, not this week coming, but the following week, looking at the cost of corruption. And of course, there's a UK report on Jamaica being on the UK, on the UK radar. There's an article in the Jamaica Cleaner, I think it was sometime in 2021 or 2022, that says, um, that, that says, Crooked politicians on Jamaica, um, um, crooked politicians on UK's radar, which support their conclusion, which support the students' conclusion that the country has mismanaged its investments and resources, or through corrupt means have wasted away the country's opportunities. In the end, we concluded that we are not a human race in the sense that we are racing against each other. There is no race but a human race separating us from animals. But if we think in terms of race, then the reality of the Caribbean and the black position within that racial thinking suggests that we lost the race of time, globalization and colonization. This loss has created the dependent and mixed realities of the Caribbean. So if we have lost a race, Yet the race is not over, since we still exist in the world. We are still part of that human race. Must we not prepare for the next event in this race so that we can become competitive? It means we can't make the same mistakes. Therefore, this project of conceptualizing the Caribbean becomes an important endeavor as an objective of this, of this course which we have spent most of our time doing. But of course, we will conclude with the foregoing lecture summary presentation below. 
What is the Caribbean? Or what is Caribbean? Past influences on the present. Novella and Keith start their project, their book project, which is entitled The Social Origins of Democratic Socialism in Jamaica, with a working definition of Jamaica in relation to the Caribbean and the history of Black people and brown peoples of the world. According to Nelson and, and Nelson, or Keith and Keith, Jamaica is an island nation. I'm lifting up their, their words, I quote, Jamaica is an island nation. Situated 90 miles to the southwest of the southernmost tip of Cuba. A former British sugar colony, it has a population of about 2.3 million people at that time. I think now it's about 57. And uh, well, let's continue with their definition. Like most other plantation economies, Jamaica has suffered from underdevelopment, which has, which has led to discontent and unrest. Again, according to Keith and Keith, that is Nelson and Novella Keith in their book, The Social Origins of Democratic Socialism in Jamaica. So earlier, I summarized um, class. And then, of course, I'm situating that. And then after, I summarized the students' interactions with the question. But then towards the end, we provided a definition from uh, Nelson and uh, Keith and Keith in their book, which is very powerful. Because according to Keith and Keith in the book, The Social Origin of Democratic Socialism in Jamaica, Jamaica is an island nation situated 90 miles to the southwest of the southernmost tip of Cuba. Of Cuba. A former British sugar colony, it has a population of about 2.3 million people at the time, now 2.7. Like most other plantation economies, Jamaica has suffered from underdevelopment, which has led to discontent and unrest. Now, the Nelsons who were uh, who are from Jamaica, but moved to the U.S. and developed an interest in deconstructivist history and critical philosophy, where they re-examined their initial analysis and understanding of Jamaica and. Caribbean in relation to the history and progress of the world, where the Caribbean is stagnant. Now, like many immigrants from the global south who continue to pursue academic and philosophical studies based on their negative experience of contrast, Nelson and Nelson became intrigued with the tension and struggle that created a political that created the political ideology of Jamaica, starting in the 1960s with Michael Manley. They provide, and Michael Mann is a former prime minister. They provided an initial assessment of Jamaica and their post independent brothers and sisters as a suffering from underdevelopment, which they diagnosed as causing discontent and unrest in Jamaica and the Caribbean. In a sense, the authors, the authors provided a picture of Jamaica as being in tension and conflict. Intention and conflict stemming from globalization. So, if the problems that persist originate from the past, then Jamaica must cut itself from the duppies of the past that continues to hold them hostage. It may require a therapy that is psychological, since the trauma seems to be post traumatic. It could be that it lingers and manifests in the abnormality of underdevelopment and discontent as a result of what Freud calls the human tendency to push unpleasant experiences to the unconscious through defense mechanisms. However, if Sigmund Freud is right, then in order to break free, it would require a fix that acknowledges the past and its effect by removing what we call blind spots in the health this involves working with supports to develop a workable, a workable resolve. However, what is important in the helping experience towards healing is the process of empowerment, where those seeking help becomes, become less dependent on the therapist and more dependent or interdependent. The client must truly become committed to the process or the process, believe in self and have hope stick to the plan. This is important as any deviation or any deviation may delay the healing process. This may provide the psychological understanding and resolve 
that the Caribbean needs as we approach that the Caribbean needs as we approach thought, as we approach Caribbean. What we are and how we are and hope to be. What we are and how we are and hope to be. Therefore, if we are to embark on a psychological understanding, we may borrow from psychology as it situates the problem perfectly. The healing process involves first removing blind spots that hinder us from seeing us for who we are or those issues that pervade and obstruct our reality. It requires revisiting the past. Nelson and Nelson did just that in their book. The definition is working as they provide an approach to Jamaica that revisits critically the social political tendency, underscoring the similar experiences that occurs in other post-colonial countries in the Caribbean. Therefore, to ask what the Caribbean is invokes the question of being as much as it is a question of tradition, culture, thinking, economics, present realities, and the consequence of true history. But it is also a question about the place and peoples of the Caribbean. It represents part of a new part of a new world with new people, island of paradise in the Americas with language, history, culture, religious consciousness, politics, and economies that are inherited from its mixed past. When we hear of Caribbean today, we think of beautiful islands, paradise with sun, sea, sand, cannabis, Bob Marley and reggae music. Usain Bolt, Ari people, Ari people, Ari people, living out their best dreams, desires, and life. But neoliberalism, globalism, income inequality, Poverty and Resistance, a book that I wrote, published in 2021, challenges this motif, this prevailing idea, stating that the Caribbean is made up of dependent, vulnerable states whose beauty is divorced from its people and enjoyed mainly by those outside of it. Further, the Caribbean represents a people who have been disrupted, detached, displaced, hybridized, and made into dependent capitalist states with some level of modernity to promote consumption within the neoliberal globalized world, which is largely a consumer society. This will be continued when we come back when um, on Friday, on Friday, on Friday, where we will continue with the lecture. We will go into lecture five on Friday. And lecture five on Friday, we will, uh, lecture five is, what is the Caribbean? Or what is Caribbean thought? We will continue, okay? We will continue because we will say, needless to say, the Caribbean remains vulnerable and open to penetration from without and exogenous shocks from within and is recreated within the mold and frame of its former masters since colonization and independence. It is going to be deep and deep and we will go even deeper. It is going to be powerful and I have a lecture and it's prepared for Friday. It's going to be for three hours again, but we will do a powerful presentation. I will go deeper into this lecture, wrapping up the laying of the foundation and conceptualizing the character. I will go deep. I will lift up the, this idea, according to Dave McGibbon, who said that they found oil in the, in, in, uh, they have discovered oil in Guyana. I actually wrote an article. I submitted a letter to the Gleaner responding to this discovery of oil because in 1952, they found bauxite in Jamaica and it was supposed to bring about some great gains, but 70 years speed fast forward 70 years what has happened with bauxite okay look what's going on in congo they have uranium but they are they are fighting over it okay and i think last night or last night in a couple of days i was reading reading i went back to read about haiti and haiti have been blessed with a lot of resources a lot of resources but again the issue of penetration but also local infighting the local infighting, the, and we talk about the unity of the Caribbean, the people. I mean, there, and you know, when um, next week we will we will get we will get into this lecture. It promises to be to be provocative, 
It will be done in prose. It will be poetic in some way. It will be preaching because, of course, I'm from the preach. I, I am an ordained minister. But it will also be academic, critical, and philosophical. It will be skeptical. But it provides opportunity. But it will challenge those opportunities. And what we do, it will be power. Watch the previous lecture because the students were fully engaged in that lecture. They were power. they were fully engaged. This is a summary of what happened on Friday the third. Okay, on February, Friday the third, six to nine. Actually, it was from 6 to 9.30. We have that on the part. Season 6, episode 13, I believe. Or 14. Season 6, episode 14. And I actually wrote uh, I wrote something to that effect in the Nailable Corporation. No, www.thenailable.com All the lectures are available on the YouTube channel, on our um, podcast feeds, um, on the Audible. It's available in at Ronaldo. There's access to it on RonaldoCMcKenzie.com And of course, most of it is at www.thenailable.com and of course we have it available for you but next week promises to be Friday, this Friday powerful. on Thursday we have Brian Concanen on the show he's the executive director for the not the international, I was saying international but it's the institute for um, institute for um, democracy for democracy um, and develop institute for democracy um, on hate on, on Haiti the IGHD, the executive director. He lives here in the US. He founded this institute. We will talk about the work that he's doing to promote democracy and justice in Haiti and, and throughout the Caribbean. That's powerful. We will talk about this. It's part of Caribbean thinking, part of um, not looking at who we are today and opportunities for the future. It's always within that. What are the opportunities for the future? But what are what has done? We have had resources, we have had investments. Okay. So we're looking, we have dogged ourselves probably. The external have dogged us, working with the internal. Okay, but therefore, how do we rise above that? How do we rise above that? That is deep, how do we rise above that? But we'll continue, this course promises to be powerful. It promises to be introspective. We, and it, it's not just, we're not just talking about Caribbean, but we're talking about Caribbean and it's that, and vulnerable peoples in the world. This is the Neoliberal Realm Podcast, brought to you by the Neoliberal Corporation. And of course, in association, in association with the Jamaica Theological Seminary, visit them at jts.edu.jts.edu.jm. JTS JTS visit us at www.thenailiberal.com. And of course, anchor, we are at anchor.fm slash the neoliberal slash slash report or YouTube, the neoliberal by Ronaldo McKenzie. Um, please, everything we, we provide, every, check out my book. The nearly body is globalization, income inequality, poverty, and resistance is available everywhere. Type it in, hardcover, paperback, ebook, audiobook, um, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, iTunes, so on and so forth. It's all of Walmart, Target, hardcover, um, in terms of local bookstores, um, they haven't gotten the picture yet, but, um, we, uh, but they were, they are catching on. They're catching on to, to the, to, to this, to, to, to what, to, 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 to the breakthrough of, 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 of people who are at, on the periphery who are now trying to come on the news. Support us. Donate to the show. Subscribe on all of our feeds. And of course, we're at HTTPA, anti.fm, slash the name of slash support. That's one of the ways you can donate to us. Thank you so much. Welcome.